somehow I, this image uh, calms me <laughs> whenever I look at it. This is the image of the Hubble telescope, uh, probably one of the most famous telescopes in the world. <laughs> um, I, I think most of this is um, something you can cover on its own. Uh, I can ease your mind about what I won't be asking you about. Because in you know, the telescopes, it can get quite um, technical, you know, like what you see here, you know, figuring the focus, size of the image, magnification factor. We're not gonna do any of that. Um, there are some things I do want you to know. I do want you to know why larger telescope is better. Um, it's kind of explained here. Larger telescopes can gather more light and also there's a um, electromagnetic wave reason that uh, larger means better resolution. Uh, this especially comes up in uh, radio, teles tel radio astronomy, uh, where you want longer and longer baseline in order to obtain better resolution. Um, and baseline is established by like distance between the two farthest elements of the radio telescope array. Um, so, but these two are the biggest uh, function of the telescope and the rest are, um, yeah, the simulation. I think if I had the time, I would play with this a little bit, um, but it's fine. I guess maybe one thing that it's, uh, um, one thing that I think I can, uh, um, kind of demonstrate better in video form than in the slide form. And it actually slides don't even address it is this, uh, which is a question that someone might have if uh, you think about this for the right length of time, which is uh, you look at this, uh, the reflector, the Newtonian telescope, and you see this thing in the middle, which seems to be in the way of your observation. So I think when someone curious thinks for just the right length of time. I think it's perfectly appropriate for someone to wonder, doesn't this get in the way? Doesn't this like ruin the image? It's like, you know, trying to look at something with uh, something in the way. <laughs> like, why doesn't this bother astronomers? So let me demonstrate how these uh, geometric optics work with the help of the simulation. Uh, the demonstration would be, oh, I think, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so right now is in December, 2020. So, <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm still fine. <laughs> so this is, um, I think a more um, dramatic when it's demonstrated using a real lens and real object and actual image that you see in a real, I don't know, video camera. Um, so I'll have to, for now, do with just a simulation. But it, I, even with the simulation alone, I can, um, I can illustrate better than I could do on the slides alone. So this is a um, illustration of how an image is formed. So the, I think a pencil is a little bit too artificial. Let me make it a candle. Candle. Ah, I thought I. Uh, well, all right. You all have to imagine that this is a candle. And um, when I, from an image of the candle with a lens, I can put a screen here. And if I put a, yeah, if I put a screen here, then it'll, um, it, it, I will see an image of the candle. Um, hmm. It concerns me a little that this doesn't let me, all right, it, it's not gonna help me demonstrate it. Um, <laughs> this is a bit disappointing. I, I thought this simulation would have a thing where I could uh, place a barrier uh, somewhere here, but um, it doesn't. So uh, let me do it this way. When you look at this image, so, you know, I have this lens. 
when I have different sized lens, um, watch what changes with the image and what doesn't change. So when I have a larger lens versus when I have a smaller lens, I think naively one might think that when the lens is smaller, then this image should cover smaller portions of the object. And you know when the lens is large enough, then you know you should cover the whole thing. It's like you know if there's a hole here, and the hole is small, then it, you only see a small portion of the image. And what's messing up your intuition here is that the kind of image you see through camera, and how the image is formed through the lens, it's uh, a little bit different. The mechanism that forms the image here it relies on forming a focus at this point. And that uh, where the focus is formed, it only depends on the curvature, how curved the lens or the mirror is. That's really the only thing it depends on. So uh, it's easier to demonstrate this with the many rays. So, you know, normally we only uh, illustrate few of the rays to enough to determine where the focus is. But the real physical picture is that there are many rays that go through this lens. And when the lens is larger, it gathers more of this light to the same focus. And when the lens is smaller, the focus is still the same. The only thing that changes is that this captures the smaller, fewer of the light rays. So when you place a barrier um, and in any portion of the lens, then all that does is it blocks some of the light rays there. But the remaining light rays that go through the lens will still form a focus here and form a sharp image there. And that's why when you have a, uh, when you have a telescope that uh, looks like this, this, the fact that this is blocking some of the light, well, okay, it's blocking some of the light, but it doesn't ruin the image because the rest of the light rays that go through will still focus and form the image the normal way. Um, so, I mean, they do want to make this as small as possible so that they capture as much of the light as possible. But this could be, you know, as large as 50% of the diameter and the image will be fine. It'll just be dimmer. So, uh, 